sitting around the house. Got nothing to do. I think I'm a fishing. Scare away the blues. I'm going fishing. Still don't know what this is. Oh, he's way out there, man. All right, cigar meadow trolling. Got a little duster on the front. We lost that fish, whatever the heck it was. Don't have no earthly idea what it was. It wasn't a kingfish. Might have been a snapper or something. Got the lines all fouled. It was our it was our first Chinese fire drill. Now we're going for it again. But he's awful tiny. Yeah. He's awful tiny. It's about like the other one. Yeah. Uh, always the strength of it, you know? Yeah. That's a small king. That's a small one. He's a keeper, though. Are you keeping We can. All right, we're going to keep him because he's our first. Uh, All right, folks. We're keeping him because it's the <laughs> first one of the season. And it's the first one we got to the boat. You know, at, at this point, I always call it beggars can't be choosers. That's exactly right. <laughs> so, good job, man. That's what they call a snake king because he's a little guy. Yeah. Okay. So, but we'll take him. Okay, I'm going to stick him right here. Let him bleed out for a second. Oh, there he is. Okay, right there. Hold him right there. Yeah. Whoa. That's gonna be a cat. Got a kingfish on. Okay, he's going right around the back again. Okay, I'm going to slow 
slow it down. Bigger than the other one. All right. That was longer than the other one. All right, my man. Captain Dave. All right. You got your goal, man. Finally got one bigger. All right, got one a little bigger. Still in the snake category. Not a 15 or 20 pounder. Pretty good, though. But guess what? Bigger scampi choosers. We'll take them. Alright, there we go. Another snake king, what the heck. We'll take them. When I was looking, all I was looking for was two kingfish anyhow. I didn't give a crap what size. I just I just wanted two. Richard's not his his wife ain't cooking up all these. So Woo! We had some yeah. action. We have had some serious action today. And it's only like 9.30. Alright, well, stick his face down in here for a second. Close your, close your mouth there, dude. Get, your, get down there in the scuppers. <laughs> like, that's how I hold them. Here's what I do with my kingfish while they're chilling out. I stick their head down in my scupper hole. Who <laughs> <laughs> them dogs out? We're so happy. We're so happy just to get bit. And you know, we weren't even nowhere near. We just went through a little bit of bait. Yeah. Right after I just said to Richard, you know these kingfish are what they call pelagic species, open o ocean roaming is what they are. And all of a sudden, zing! It went, it went like boop, 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 boop. And then he took off. <laughs> like, a, like, he was, like he was nibbling it. We'll take nibblers too. Oh yeah, we'll take them all. All right. Okay, time to clean up the the schmutz. All right, we got something something wacko on here, and there it is. Here it is. He's coming. He's coming in with the tail. He's he's hooked in the tail. We were drowning him. Okay, Richard. He's going across the bat. I think he just come. He got. He was tail hooked or something. He's tail hooked, a little kingfish, he's tail hooked. Maybe we'll let this one go. Yep, small one, he's tail hooked. So he's hooked to the side. Oh yeah, a little tiny kingfish. Oh, oh my God. Look what? at the cobias and stuff right here or something. Right here. Oh my God, somebody was following him up. Look at this. Look at that. He's hooked on the top and he's hooked. How the hell did that happen? Look at that. <laughs> All right, I'm going to turbo this little dude back. Go ahead, go, go. Oh my God, look at all the cobia behind the boat. A whole shit pot of cobia, man. They were right here. They were right here. A whole bunch of cobia. I mean, like four or five of them. Are they like hot water? <laughs> no, I mean, they, they were following us for whatever reason. Oh my God. Come on. They were right here. They were right there behind the engine. No, they were just curious of what we were doing here. They all looked kind of small, but there was like four or five of them. A whole group of cobia right behind my engine. And then they just disappeared. Cobia on! Homemade Captain Dave jig! Got a cobia! <laughs> he ate my jerk jigger! There he goes! All the Ryoga! I know, there was like 10 of them behind the boat! Oh my god, look at that! Is that a shark? I don't know. 
that's eating our baits back here. A giant shark or something. Oh, that, oh. Nope. hang on to him, Richard. Hang on to him. Let him eat it. We got monster shark or something behind the boat. Or that was a cobia, a bigger one. This is going to be, I might have to net this fish because I don't know if he's legal. There were, the cobia were small looking. I made this in my garage. <laughs> when there's 10 Kobe behind the boat, I guess you can entice one to do something. I told you they'd come right back up, Richard. I told you. Going this slow, like we're going this, we're like at a dead crawl right now. I don't know, but it was a monster. It was big. It was a monster. It was big. Whatever come up behind the boat. I'm gonna have to net this cobia. This one's for you, Warwalk. I gotta get them all the way up. I'm not even close to done yet. Keep an eye on these lines. This one's for you, old Dr. Gary. We had 10 cobia behind the boat. Coming up now. Really small cobia. Okay, come on over here, Richard. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna go underneath his head. There you go, lift them up, lift them up, lift them up. Get them on in here. Oh, my net just broke. Alright. Okay. Let me make sure everything's good here. Okay, I'm going to pull the hooks out. Just get a... Uh... Alright, that's what I just caught him on. A Captain Dave stainless steel jerk jigger. He's just a baby. All right, he's just a baby. But we had about 10 of them behind the boat. Mr. Cobia. This one's for you, Dr. Gary. All right. Okay, go meet your friends. No, but they look like one, don't they? Richard said they park catfish? No, but they sure do look like one. That was cool! On the jerk jigger. I knew I could catch something on this thing because it looks like a little minnow darting. And as soon as it hit the water, I gave one jerk and somebody went, Oop, and that was that dude right there. Man, am I satisfied. <laughs> that was fun. Cool. Okay, we need to reel that one in that looked like it got blasted. Let's see if that's... Well, I think it was this one. Yeah, see if there's uh, any bait left on that thing. Well, you said, did you see them? And then I had to look around. Probably saw them. I looked like a bunch of catfish. Yeah, well, this is a fish called a cobia. And he eats so good, but they were all small. All right, I got, I got something jigging. We got the line all, we had a fish go under the boat. We had a fish go under the boat and all the line got stuck in the kicker prop. And now we're just sitting here trying, trying to recoup. And I throwed my jig, my jerk jigger over the side and he just broke me off. No. All right, well, that was that jerk jigger. Just really? broke, broke me right off. All right, I don't have another big jerk jigger with me. So, I'm gonna try the steel shad. 
I think those Kobe are following us under the boat. So we'll see what the deal is here. Kicker motor's pretty much out of commission with all the braid wrapped around the prop. I'm not going to try to run it. So you can always troll with the big one. But this is pretty cool. <laughs> Hooking stuff up here. Let's see if we can get anything on the steel shad. You want to let this go down a little bit? Yeah, go ahead. I don't know if we're over anything anymore, but. Oh man, the steel shad's got some ungodly action. Ungodly action. <laughs> it's like slick calm out here. We made it to 11 o'clock. Whatever that last fish, we had a last fish. He was on this downrigger. He popped the downrigger and ran underneath the boat and then it got caught in the dang kicker motor. Let's see. I only got a 20 pound leader on here and I've been goofing around with this thing. I only got a 20 pound mono leader. Boy, did we have fun today. As I was taking the line that broke and hand lining it to the boat, those little cobia were about to eat it and it was in my hand. All right. Guess what we got, folks? God dang baby cobias are all over the back of the boat again. Get ready to go in, and I dropped the steel shad over the side, and I'm hooked up. I'm hooked up on the steel shad out in the middle of the desert on a little pile of bait. It is taking off. Oh my god. Yeah, go ahead and reel that one in, Richard. Well, I gotta chase this guy. Go ahead. Wow. Steel Shad. <laughs> the famous Amazon lure. I gotta chase him. On the raw yoga and the Daiwa beef stick. You want me to go a certain way? Now I'm right on top of him right now. I mean, but do you want me to turn to the right? No, let's just sit here a second. Sit here. I mean, you don't want to get it in the motor. Right? Get out. You want me to turn the motor off? No. No, we got to keep it running. We do? Yeah. I got He's taking a lot of line. He's smoking me, man. I do not even know. Well, what it 
It was a giant fish. Didn't act like a shark. Popped it right in the middle. You lost your lure. Yeah. That's the second one you've lost today. Captain Betty. Richard doesn't realize we buy lures just to lose them. <laughs> okay, 20 pound motto. 20 or 30. Just popped it. Whatever that was, was a stud stud. Okay. Stick a fork in my ass. I'm done. Are you done? I'm done. Well, the steel shad works. That's all I know. The steel shad works. We're heading in on this pond-like Atlantic Ocean day with our two state kingfish. A cobia. Schools of cobia behind the boat. Two lost lures. Two lost fish on the lures. And... We had about four of them this morning that we don't even know what the hell they were and they got on. So it was action packed. We had some behind the boat that jumped. I don't know what it was. And yeah, something that came while the cobia were right behind the boat. Something was trying to eat our bait way out behind the boat, just thrashing. <laughs> so this place is full of life. But if you can see this ocean, this is the way Dave likes it. I don't like having to hold on and fish. This is my kind of day. We're, uh, let's see, 8.8 .8 miles from the end of the Mayport Jetty Rocks. So, I, I said to myself this morning, if we can go out and catch two Keeper Kingfish, I would be happy. We didn't set no records. We didn't catch no tournament grade fish. But we had fun. We had a blast. This was so much fun. And it's it's really good to have, you know, you when you get one person, I don't have to try to, you know, satisfy little Jimmy and, and everything. So that's the reason why I said I'm taking Richard offshore. That was fun. You know, it would have been good if, if your daughter or somebody could have came, but, you know, hey, we had it all to ourselves. That's fun. So, all right, time to go make the donuts. See all those orange things? See all these orange things? They're my tip of the week. See, I've got this uh, tray and I keep all kinds of stuff in these welding rod tubes. See so here, I got one with all my bigger, heavier knives in it. All right. My first idea ever was I picked one of these up said, man, what a great way of keeping fillet knives dry and everything on the boat without taking up space, like having to put them in a box or something. And sheaths don't work. And, you know, as the old saying goes, there's no real dry spot on a center console. I mean, I do have a complete dry storage spot. But I got my life preservers in there, my mobile office, my you know GoPros and stuff. But they've got this nice rubber O-ring, and some of them have like this clip. And then I put on there like my thick knives, and my newest ones. These are my newest ones I got on my Tools of the Trade page. On my Amazon Tools of the Trade page, I got these. They kind of have this little uh, flat spot so they don't roll around. They got the clip. They're a little sturdier than those orange ones. I was wishing they were orange, but they're red. And these, I keep my, uh, my two boga grips in. Because your boga grips can get all salty and nasty. So I keep these in. And 
here and they fit real nice. I'll show you one other thing. They all come, not all, but they all come with like a divider inside. Let me show you one of those. Here we go, one with a divider, I believe. Now these I got at, um, when they had them, Northern Tool, I believe. Harbor Freight used to have these and now they, they don't even carry them anymore. So there's burgundy colored ones, those red ones I got off of Amazon. See how it's got a divider inside? And here, I basically keep more of bait knives. I keep four of them on the boat, keep them in here. And let me tell you, I have a way of leaving knives out. And when I leave knives out, my knives get all rusty and corroded. So this is just a tip of a, a good way of keeping your knives dry and uh, see this one's got a clip but it doesn't have these roll around because they have no flat spot on them. So I thought I'd just pass that on. I've got quite a collection as you can see underneath here of all these. I keep all my plastic bags in it. I keep my Ziploc bags in them and uh, they really work out. These are actually Hobart brand, but um, they're not as nice as those red ones I got. You know, they all just sit down in there. See, I'm lucky to have, I'm lucky to have a tray. And all, they, all those tubes sit in that tray just perfectly. So I thought I'd pass it on. It really seems to work out. If you got a spot where you want to put a tube and your fillet knives or some Ziploc bags for when you're cleaning fish, maybe it'll help somebody. And that's all I'm trying to do is pass on something that works for me. So I'll see you on the next one.